as we celebrate the Lord Jesus. Come on, let's just clap and give God praise. He has been wonderful. He has been awesome. He has been awesome. And for this, we give him thanks. We're about to get ready. Remain standing. I'm going to invite Elder Robert Murray to come and open up in prayer, and then I will come and officially introduce Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us bow our heads. Father, we give you thanks for your goodness and your mercy towards us. We thank you, O oh God, for this feast as we've come to the last day. 65 years, Lord God, you have led us and kept us. You have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. And tonight, O oh God, we give you thanks. We cry holy. We say thank you, Jesus, for every mercy that you have bestowed upon us. And tonight, Lord God, as we come, we come to worship you. We thank you for your grace that we are able to come together again, to reunite as a choir, to sing praises unto you. We have been reminded in this week that it's about Jesus Christ and him crucified. Our focus is upon you, Lord. Our attention, our mind is centered upon you. So as we sing tonight, Lord, we glorify your holy name. We praise you for your mighty acts. We praise you for your love. We give adoration, oh God, because Lord, you have led us and continue to lead us. You are the great shepherd of our souls. And Lord God, we are reminded to continue to preach you and you only. To look to you and to look to you only. Lord, let self be slain tonight. Put us on the back burner, Lord God. For your glory you will not share with another. And let us see you tonight, God, in everything that we do. In everything that we say. In every song that we sing. Our attention is upon you. We thank you, God. We thank you for the divine protection. We thank you for the hedge around us. We thank you for Bethel tonight. Continue to keep us under your blood and hide us where the devil can do us no harm. And Lord, as we go forward, we go forward in your name. Bless Bishop Nathan Simmons. Lord, you gave him this project 19 years ago, Lord. And under your direction, he brought it into being. Continue to bless him and to guide him and to strengthen him and his family at this time. And Lord, we will continue to give you the glory. We will continue to give you the praise. We will continue to lift our hands. We will continue to say thank you, Jesus. We will continue to bow at your throne and we will enter, Lord, to obtain more grace, grace and more grace, for it abounds in your hands. Bless us now, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated. Just check that you're in the right road. Let the person next to you know, tell them, I'm a worshiper. I'm a worshiper. Tell the person on the other side, I'm a praiser. And tell them tonight, I intend to praise and to worship. Bethel, you're amazing. I'm telling you, I don't know that we were expecting so many people to be here tonight. But God bless you and people are still coming in. We anticipate having a great time tonight. 19 years ago, the then Minister Nathan Simmons had a meeting with the Pioneer Fathers, our bishops, and shared with them a vision for recording an album, a CD. We don't even have CDs now. In sharing that vision with them, that they would record a live album, 
the bishops were very encouraging they were very encouraging what did I just say they were very encouraged they said brother Nathan absolutely absolutely but then the young man asked if they had any money to help the project and the bishop said brother Nathan go on in Jesus name so he had to raise the finances and if you know anything about recording a live album it's not just what happens on the night but then post-production did I say that right I'm looking at all of the producers did I say post-production right and all of the uh, resources that go into post-production and finally we had a product we had something that would be a marker in the history of our church and we believe that it was right on this 65th International Holy Convocation that we commemorate and we relive that moment 19 years ago. Doesn't this choir look great tonight? Some of them have come out of retirement. Some of them are still singing, but it is my pleasure tonight to be able to introduce Bishop Nathan Simmons and the Only Because Reunion Choir here at the 65th International Holy Cup. Thank you, Bishop. I remember growing up in Bethel. Whenever we came to convocation, a convocation would not take place unless you heard the choir sing the song. Feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill it up. I wonder if any of you want to help sing that tonight. Come on. I lift it.
Sir Joshua Livingston, everybody. I love him, Pastor Reynold Johnson. I'll serve him with all. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. I want you to clap your hands and give God praise all over this room. Oh, come on. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. And shout unto God. Come on, choir. Clap your hands. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways. Who knows the scripture tonight? Acknowledge him and he shall do what? I need you to tell somebody, say, I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, come on. I need you to jump on your feet and clap your hands all over the house. Come on, Bethel. Put your hands together. Come on, choir. Clap your hands. If you're leaning on the everlasting arms, come on, clap your hands all over the room. Tell somebody, I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. Everybody clap your hands.
everybody clap y'all. Y'all know this song. for more of you and holy are you are you know desperately
Pastor Ren.
I know that this is a recording session, but even in a recording session, I get sweat in my eyes. I can't see anything, but I can still worship the Lord same way. But I know all of you know this. It's a song everywhere. It says, Lord. Sing with us.
praise him. As part of the Only Because album, we were privileged to have with us that night none other than our then presiding bishop, Bishop Sidney Alexander Don. Let us give God thanks for him and his legacy. He got up to sing a song that nobody else in here would be able to match. I remember he stood around here. He looked across there and he said, Some of you were there, some of you were. <laughs> but as he did that, I, I, I put him in his usual key, which was E flat. Because whether I gave him E, B, C, D, or Z, he was going to sing it in the same key anyway. Now, we're just going to do a line of that. Because like I said, only Bishop can sing that like him. Take me to Come on. The Lord. Because we know how the song goes. When I'm weak. to help people like Bishop Dunn, which is all of us who are going through something. And it simply says, trials come to everyone. Come on. Troubles on every side. Seems, Seems you're going through on your own. This is for somebody tonight and the winds. Tell somebody the rain. But the sun will. Tell them again, trials. It's coming to every one of us. Oh, 
bless you, God bless you. Choir, please be seated for a moment. Before we go any further, I certainly want to invite right now. We have a few singing groups in Bethel. I'm going to invite first instrument, the Landell Twins, the Silhouettes, and those who are part of the project's ministry to come now and minister to us a song that says, Perfect Peace. Let's give God thanks for them as they come. Bethel has a rich talent after which the choir will come back with a song that you all will know. It simply says, that's who he is. So could you all come now? God bless you as you're coming. Come on, let's worship the Lord.
and that he will make a way out of nowhere. God will make a way out of nowhere. God is going to make a way for somebody tonight. He's gonna make God well. God will make. make. He's gonna make a way out of no way. God will. Give God thanks for the Bethel Corral. God bless you. Thank you so much. They worked hard practicing choir. That's who he is. Followed by the title of the album, only because Minister Joshua Livingston at this time. It's all right to praise him while we're getting ready. When we're in the studio, we know how to put the pauses on and the fillers in. But while we're in church, we just worship continuously. Amen. Our microphones are coming. And, and we look slightly different from 19 years ago, but the voices have matured. <laughs> I'm ready, I'm ready. Let's go.
to have Elder Joseph Pitt with us. Don't go too far, Minister Jonathan. I know they're playing mighty nice. I know they're playing mighty nice. Keep going, keep going. I know that's what's there. I was watching YouTube the other day. And there was a service in Bethel Coventry. And I don't know how it started, but I heard them singing this song. And I was like, wow, they've taken an album song and it's now testimony meeting song. And I was like, I was so encouraged that we don't allow these songs to die. So choir, can you sing, oh, how sweet it is to be on the Lord's side.
gonna make everybody in here the choir. along with the choir but just give me D a moment Minister Luke just give me a D there Elder Pitt wanted to be here so bad he's probably watching online he just could not make it after service but I know all of you know the verse Minister Luke just play that verse for me oh what a thought my
seated where you are, as right now I invite back to the podium our presiding bishop, Bishop Edmund, who will do the receiving of the offering and will be back after Bishop. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Are you being blessed tonight? Those that know the Lord is with us and you're being blessed, just say hallelujah. Amen. It's just a wonderful. They're going to come back, but God knows this choir is singing tonight. Can you just bless them? I see some have these battery-operated fans. They didn't have those 19 years ago. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to invite our deacons and ushers to come. I'm going to lead in receiving this offering tonight, this last offering that we will give in Convocation 22. My soul has been richly blessed, and I thank God for each and every one of you, amen, that are here tonight. I'm telling you, I, I thought, yes, there would be a few, but this place is pretty much full tonight. And I thought that the bee in Bethel is not only Bethel, but the bee in Bethel means beautiful. Look at someone say, you're beautiful. Saints, we are just, I am just so blessed tonight. And we are, yeah, oh, somebody's look like they, night, they like hearing that. Turn and tell somebody else, you're beautiful. <laughs> and we're appreciative for every good thing that the Lord has done for us. Jesus. Now this is, we're going to go home with this in every church. Somebody just needs to say, Jesus. And the response will be, and him crucified. Let's try it. Jesus. Jesus. That's it. Let's take that home with us. Let's take it home with us. Jesus and him crucified. This is our last offering tonight. I want to thank you for your giving throughout this convocation. For those that have registered before coming, we give God praise for you. I am hopeful that when all of the things are done, that we will be in good shape. And that the Lord has done what he said that he would do. And supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory. So get this last offering tonight. We've got a preacher that's coming, and it is our custom to be a blessing, amen, to the person whom God selects, amen, to be his mouthpiece. So we have two baskets, one, the main offering, our general offering, amen, and then we want to be a blessing, amen, to our preacher tonight, amen. And I pray for those of you that have to get on the M6, the M1, the M5, the M42, the M62, I'm hoping you'll be able to get on those roads before it turns dark tonight. And so you'll be able to be refreshed in the name of the Lord. Let's stand, everybody, with your offering in your hand. Amen. Someone say, Bishop, all I have is some slurpy money left. That's all I have. Amen. Said, That's all I have. Is I just have enough to just buy a patty, a cocoa bread, and a bigger. So, Bishop, that's all I have left. Well, you don't need the bigger, so give the bigger money. And you might not even need the cocoa bread, so give the cocoa bread money. Patties, I love them, so I'm not going to tell you you don't need those. But whatever you have tonight, God is able to bless, multiply, duplicate, expand. I'm blessed as I look over to my right to see my brother from another mother. The Honorable Bishop Windsor Queensborough and his lovely wife, Lady Sharon. God bless you. Winds, come on and bless this offering for me, brother. Amen. Give God praise for him. We have been praying for him. We love him. We love him. He is a son of our church. Uh, Now, for those, now I, I can do this because he's my brother, but for those of us who've known Wins a long time, don't he look good? Hallelujah. Father, how wonderful, how marvelous 
are your works towards us. We have seen, we have tasted that you are good. You are excellent in all your ways. And right now, Father, we're going to continue our worship with the giving of our offering. We thank you, Lord. It is you who has given us power to obtain wealth. And out of that wealth, we sow back into the kingdom. May God bless us all in Jesus' precious name. Let the church say amen. Big brother, God bless you. Follow the directions of the ushers, please, and come, amen, as quickly as you can, so we'll be blessed tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus.
everyone, Dalton Harvey. God bless you. Over the last two years, I wonder if you can just give me, uh, give me a C, please, Minister Daniel. We have lost quite a few loved ones and as much as we miss them, there is one face that we want to see and that is the face of Jesus. I wonder if I've got more than three people that wants to see the face of Jesus. Can't wait to see Look upon His face. Come on, choir. Thank you. is going to say fall on before tell somebody again can't wait At the end of convocation, Bishop Dunn would get the mic. It would be a Thursday, somewhere around there, and he'll start thanking God for the cooks. He will start thanking them for, for everybody who took part. I want to give God thanks for everybody that has come tonight and helped to make the service what it is. But 
But there's one voice I want to hear tell me, well done. I want to hear the voice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, say, well done. You've been good. Missionary Maxine, sing that for me.
I speak. tonight and we pray that we all will be steadfast until the end I will be introducing presenting the preacher in just a moment Bishop Miller I'm gonna ask you to come to make the presentation uh, that you have and then we have just the, one or two more things to do and then the preacher Amen. Thank you. praise the Lord brethren um, I have the great privilege to make a presentation to one of my colleagues, somebody who has been involved in the diligent study of the Word of God, but not only has he done that for himself, but he has shared the knowledge that he has learned with a number of people who he would call his students. Amen. And I'm just going to call Bishop Lance Dino up here to stand with me. It's nice when you don't know about it. <laughs> For your commitment and your dedication, I know that you take the Word of God very, very seriously and that you have taught it without imparting any kind of error. You have worked hard to make sure that the students that are before you fully understand the principles of the doctrine. And I pray that the Lord will continue to strengthen you as you continue in the work, both in your local church, your district church, and even up in Manchester when you visit us. <laughs> God bless you all, Bishop. This is from the, the school, the Bethel School of Biblical Studies. They want to let you know that they really appreciate the work that you have done. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bless you, Bishop. We thank you. Bishop Simmons just said that on the last night of the convocation, Bishop Dunn would give the vote of thanks to all those that have served to prepare. And it is my honor tonight in that tradition to take just a few moments to thank so many people. We're out front. I'm out front. But there has been so many people that have been working in the background and they have been working for months. Zoom after Zoom, meeting after meeting, late night WhatsApp messages going back and forth. And I know that if I were to try to name each and every one tonight, that I would fail and, and, and forget somebody's name. And so, Bethel, I'm going to ask you as I just call the areas that these brethren have served in, they know who they are, you know who they are, because we have had to interface with them uh, this week. And so can we just, before, we're gonna do big, two big claps. We're gonna do one at the beginning and one at the end. So let's do big clap right now for everyone that has worked, everyone that has served. Come on, let's do it a little louder than that. Let them know that we appreciate them. I think you are aware that since the pandemic, our national trustees have had to develop an entire new management structure and operational system here 
at the convention center. And this center now operates mainly on a volunteer, yes, a volunteer system. And I want us to just say a big thank you to our brothers and sisters. At one point, we didn't know necessarily who they were. Uh, but this week, our brothers and sisters have served us here at the Bethel Convention Center. And I want to give God praise for them. Thank God for opening up the building. We have made it to Sunday. I have not heard. I, now that we've had the AC issue, it was coming on sometimes. And then it wasn't coming on. I have not. I know it's been warm. But I don't know I've heard of anybody falling out or fainting. May have felt like it. God held it together and, and kept it moving. It's going to be service next week. I said, God, just keep us cool until Sunday. And uh, they have opened up the building for us. They have moved chairs for us. They have done everything that we've asked them to do. And I want us to say thank you to all those that have served here at the Bethel Convention Center this week. We appreciate them. And as we leave, we will let them know. We are now in this tech age where we need screens, we need cameras, we need all types of things. And I want us to give God praise for the tech team that is sitting towards the back, making sure that people around the world are able to participate, that we're able to have words on the screen, graphics. We appreciate them. We are a singing church. And so I want to give God praise for all of the choir members that have served this week and all of the musicians that have played and have ministered. I want to thank God for the BSL team that have ensured that those persons who need that ministry have been able. Come on, let's clap and give God praise for them. We certainly appreciate them. I want to thank God for our ushers. My goodness. In every session, they have come and they have worked. And our deacons, we thank God for our deacons and our ushers. I want to thank God for those that have gone to pick up delegates from the airport, Heathrow, Gatwick, wherever they've needed to go. And I was uh, talking to some of our overseas delegates and they said, Bishop, the driver has been so courteous. He has been so kind. Let's give God praise for all of the drivers that have gone to pick up the brethren. Amen. In every area, yes, the cooks, the cleaners. Let's praise God for the cleaners who made sure that the place is clean. And to our parking attendants, our parking team that guided us to where we needed to go. We made some changes in the parking and it has run as smooth as it can. I want you to know from the bottom of my heart, and all of us as leaders of this great church, how much we appreciate you. It just cannot happen without you and the workers that come. And we ask that you take a couple of weeks off to exhale. Amen. And we'll be back on it again because the Lord has provided a platform for us this week for us to go higher and higher. Now, will you help me uh, thank the delegates of this international convocation who came from the north, the south, the east, and the west in this cost of living crisis, you, you made reservations at hotels, you put gas in your car, you came with your children, you registered them for busy. Thank God for the busy team. You have given offerings during the time when people said nobody would come, that Bishop, people are not going to come, but can you... Bethel, stand on your feet and give God praise for you that we have had an awesome week of convocation. Amen. The devil has been kept out and the Holy Ghost has come in and we give all the glory. Jesus. Jesus. Turn and tell your neighbor, I love you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Brother Glenn Burke has mislaid his wallet. Where is Glenn? He just came. Now, there he is. And if I know Glenn, there's a whole some money in it. So please, if you find it, resist the temptation. Please give it back. Turn it in to the Welcome Center. 
Amen. And I want to, let me, the, the, uh, let, yes, let me give God praise for the welcome team, those that served at the welcome center, our registration team. There are magazines available for those who have registered. We don't want to take any home. We have kept those in uh, just a couple copies in the archives. But if you um, registered and you didn't get a magazine, please, before you leave, go and make that known so that you can be blessed in Jesus. And it was a beautiful magazine. It is something that we will want to keep. Amen. We thank God for our design team and everyone that has participated in it. It is now time. The word of the Lord Jesus engaging in conversation it was a duel with Satan in the wilderness. He said to him, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And I thank God tonight for our preacher, who I know very, very well, and I am delighted that he is here. Proverbs 17, 17 says that a friend loveth at all times. And the brother is born for adversity. And I give God praise for my brother tonight. Not just because he's my brother, but a man of God, anointed to preach the word of the Lord. I am 14 months older than him and 14 inches taller. <laughs> and so I'm delighted. He and my sister... Uh, Shelly are here. He's a son of this church. And again, every time we need him. After the singing of this great choir tonight that have blessed our hearts, the next voice we will hear will be that of our preacher for tonight. I invite you to stand when he comes to honor him in the name of the Lord Jesus. Bishop Nathan Simmons, you have done well tonight, sir. You have done well. This choir has been amazing tonight. Come on, somebody. Bless God for them. Bless God for this choir. We salute you tonight. God bless you in Jesus. Come on, Sister Ruth. Sister Ruth Gordon, everyone. God is able. God is able.
needs to know. Somebody here needs to know. God is able. I'm glad I know. He's able to deliver your soul. He's able to deliver your soul. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. If he hath redeemed you from the hand of the enemy, why don't you open your mouth and release a praise unto God? For he is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our God is worthy to be praised and we thank him and we've come tonight to magnify him the choir has blessed us and we thank God for his power and for his purpose I just want to greet the presiding bishop Dexter Edmund amen in the name of Jesus Christ and to all of the members of the board of bishops amen to this choir to this great congregation, to my husband, Bishop P.J. Edmonds Sr. We thank God for him and for all that we have done. This Convocation 2022 has been absolutely amazing. Amazing. Amen. God has visited us. Amen. There's a song that says, you gave me my hands to reach out to man to show him your love and your perfect plan. You gave me my ears so I could hear your voice so clear I can hear the cries of sinners but can I wipe away their tears you gave me my voice to speak your word to sing that have been broken so many people to be free Lord I'm available to you I will I give to you I'll do what you say to you. 
to me My hands, my ears, my voice, my eyes So you can use them as you please I have emptied out my cup So that you could fill it up Now I'm free and I just want to be more available to somebody wants the Lord to use you will you just worship him for just 30 seconds as we believe God the Lord bless you the Lord bless you God is worthy of our praise uh, you may be seated in the power of the Lord I want to greet everyone 
in the victorious, invincible, efficacious name of the Lord Jesus tonight, and we're grateful for just the opportunity to share in such a rich environment. We know that he's worthy, and because he's worthy, we generate praise and worship. And I believe that we ought to praise God at the level we want him to move. So if you want him to move in a mighty way, make up your mind to praise him in a mighty way. And if there's some things that you need God to move on your behalf, let your worship, let the level of your worship match your expectation of God. And the more that we lift him is the more that he's going to draw us into himself. I, so I give God honor and praise. And then to uh, my brother, I love him amazingly, uh, presiding to Bishop Dexter Edmund. And I want you to understand that while, I was thinking this the other night, that while we're celebrating 65 years of awesome ministry uh, in the United Kingdom, uh, we're also celebrating five years of amazing leadership from Bishop Dexter Edmund. Can you just thank God for five years of amazing leadership? Oh, I don't hear you yet. I don't hear you yet. My family and I are particularly proud of uh, the sacrifice that he's made and, and we support him uh, in every way. To Lady Alonda in her absence, to uh, presiding Bishop Saunders, Lady Winsome, in their absence, we thank God for them. Uh, this is the, the last night of the feast, and I would teach our preachers at home, I would teach them Hebrews 4 and 12, that the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. That I'm going to, then I would teach them either be quick or powerful. And if you're not going to be powerful, be quick. Meet me in Hebrews chapter 12. Uh, just a few verses I want to lift up to make a contribution uh, to what has been an outstanding convocation. The worship has been rich. The praise has been rich. The word has been rich. And I think it's because Jesus is back in the midst of us. And any time you put God in his rightful place. Oh, I miss somebody. Any time you put God in his rightful place. Worship becomes easy. Hebrews 12, wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And here's the lesson looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him adored the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord. Let's say amen. amen. And uh, it's, it's something when you can return to the gospel because the gospel is where it first began. So I just want to remind you that he died to give you something to live for. He died to give you something to live for. Now, will you energize the worshiper next to you and just teach somebody next to you and tell them he died to give me something to live for. Uh, that person wasn't excited enough. That wasn't enough Holy Ghost. Look at somebody else and tell them, I still have something to live for. I would open this by simply saying that there are, there are themes and ideas that define every generation. 
And sometimes I believe we feel as though we are living life without purpose or rhyme. When when you really understand it after you've lived life for a while, you will notice that there has been a theme to your life. There's a certain ideology that follows you. There's certain things that seem to always confront you because all of us live by a theme. The writer, uh, when you follow scripture, does not necessarily describe it as a theme, uh, but simply put, all of us are on a path. And whether we like what we face or not, whether we are amused by the challenges we face, all of us are driven by a theme, something that's consistent in everything we think, everything we do, everything we believe. And the challenging thing is that sometimes we don't connect it until much later in life. But Jesus does not do anything by accident. And so if you are in his world, mm -hmm, if you are in his universe, you absolutely have purpose. Because God does not create anything without forethought. And before he creates, he thinks. And when he's pleased with his thinking, then he releases his creative power to create what's on his mind. It's challenging, I believe, because you never hear the sun question what's its purpose. You never hear the moon rise at night and question, what am I here for? Everything that God creates has purpose. The stars are never confused. They know the reason why they have been created. But it's interesting, the only thing of God's creation that seems to find times of reflection and confusion is humanity. Everything else that God creates flows in what he was created for. Yet the crowning glory of his creation, which is man, sometimes still struggles with what's purpose. Uh, it's interesting that God created man on the sixth day, rested on the seventh day. It's surprising because... Uh, Seven, if you follow this, is the number of completion or perfection. The number six seems to then be just short of fulfillment and perfection. I think it's interesting that as we leave this convocation, we recognize that you and I, we were created on the sixth day. So there is still stuff we've got to work out. Because it seems as though we are one step short of being exactly what God created us to be. I'm simply making the case for Jesus. Because without Jesus, you and I are disoriented. We are confused. We are without bearing. And I think this is what the psalmist was feeling in eight, when he, out of his spirit, he cried, but what is man? Oh, that thou art mindful of him. And, uh, when I consider, this is David, I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon, the stars that thou hast made. And when I look at man, I said, but what is man then? What? Well, everything else that you create has purpose, but there are still some of us still searching for the theme of our life. And the case that's being made here is that without Jesus, we are lost without direction. It was a theme, I believe. Every generation is shaped by a theme. This is why in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, there were certain things that happened in the world that shaped the way that we are. 
But I began to think about this as we celebrate 65 years. Our fathers and our mother's generation, uh, they were shaped by the idea of sacrifice. That's what shaped their thinking. Everything, uh, possibly because they did not, everything did not come easy. So everything they did, everything they had to accomplish was by sacrifice. At any time, you work hard to get somewhere. At any time, you have to put effort and challenge into something. It simply means that you're not going to release it so easy. Because you have to work hard to achieve it. They sacrificed. The first sacrifice is when they left the golden shores of Jamaica. Left to go to foreign. To sacrifice for a life they didn't understand. They sacrificed to begin a life in a country they did not know. Does anybody understand sacrifice? Because if you don't understand what came before, you will never truly appreciate what you have now. And until we rehearse what was sacrificed, we will never fight for, we will never strive for, we will never contend for where we are now. But because they sacrificed. Oh, at 65 years, we can inherit things that if they had not sacrificed, oh, then we would not be here. And so they sacrificed, they raised us. Uh, they took menial jobs while still preaching the gospel full time. Say it again, they took menial jobs while they were preaching the gospel full time. Because it was a sacrifice to raise a family in a culture that they were learning to understand. And they sacrificed to send us to infant school and to primary school and to intermediary school and, uh, and to universities. Because they understood sacrifice. Because they did not do it for themselves. They knew that there was a generation coming. That if they did not sacrifice. And so we've moved now, interestingly enough, and I'm almost done. We've moved from a season or a theme of sacrifice into a theme of succession. And when you come into something by succession, you may not understand how you received it. Because now something that comes so easily, somebody bled to receive. And so this is why as we acknowledge even the 65th year of this church, while we celebrate what God is doing now, we ought to reach for another praise for what he's done before. Because had he not done it before, I don't hear my seven yet. Had he not done it before, we would not have what we have right now. But it took somebody open your mouth and say, sacrifice. Sitting here because somebody had to sacrifice. Because what drove their generation was, hitherto hath the Lord helped us. And so when you consider this in light of the text then, uh, Jesus then begins to set before us a reason why we ought to live for purpose and have purpose in mind. Uh, it's interesting that John, when he writes about him in 8, or when Jesus stands before Pilate, you remember the exchange, and Pilate is saying to Jesus, I have power over your life. Jesus makes a revolutionary statement. He says, for this cause came I into the world. And to this end was I born. Jesus understood, like I believe we need to take away from this meeting, that nothing can happen to us that God has not stamped, approved over our lives. So Jesus was simply saying that I had purpose before I came. And my purpose also had an end in mind. This is why no matter how difficult it gets and no matter how strange your life is, there is a point where the enemy will frustrate, but there's also a time when the enemy has to let you go. 
because if there is a beginning to a thing, child of God, just hold on just another season because if there is a way in, there has got to be a way out. And if you trust the God that brought you in, every worshiper knows that if there was a door in, there must be a door out. So while we're waiting for God to move, I will bless the Lord at all times. Oh, because there is a way out of this. And so Jesus is making it plain then that there is purpose for us and we've got to know that I came into this life for a cause and for this end was I born. So now we have to assume as we begin to look at what Jesus did to sacrifice for us. Because if we understand the spirit of sacrifice, just like our parents sacrificed for us so that we could have the privilege of living the life we live then it ought to make us praise God more for the sacrifice of his son that enables us no matter how we feel and no matter what the economy is saying and no matter how things might be looking negative we have to assume that if there was a way into this there has got to be a way out because God is never going to leave us without purpose and so identity is key here identity because when you have identity according to God you must understand that we have who God called us to be Jesus then can be referred to in several ways uh, to many he was the son of man but you see the son of man describes his relationship to his earthly connection but not only was he the son of man he was also the son of God. There are two of you in there trying to battle for your life. There is a person you think you are. Then there's the person who God has really created you to be. And that's why there's always a fight. Every day that you wake up, there is always a fight. Because there are two things happening in your experience all at the same time. So now I've got to draw strength from my relationship with God, which enables me to overcome the relationship that I have with man. And if I can draw strength from God, even when it looks like I'm not going to be successful, I will always come out because I affirm in my heart that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. What is the devil going to do with you when all you say is this is for the glory of God? How are you going to be defeated when you look at every tragedy and still respond with to God be the glory. If you could ever get that straight in our lives, whether he gives or he takes, God is still looking for a church that has been blood bought and blood washed to lift their hands no matter what's happening and declare to God be the glory. When I'm up, to God be the glory. When I'm confused, to God be the glory. When things aren't working out for my life, to God be the glory. Because anytime you bring glory into your circumstance, the devil knows he's got to let you go. But when you don't praise him, and when you don't lift him up, then the enemy can sit on your life as if nothing is moving. But at this convocation, I believe that God is reminding us that no matter how we feel, if you can open your mouth and declare to God be the to God be the glory. Somebody lift your hand and say to God be the glory. That's all I'm going to say. Or let's see what the presider says. When something happens to you, look at that trial and say Jesus and him crucified because that's how I'm going to make it through. So it's a case of identity. Do you know who you are then? Do you know who has bought you? Do you know what God God has called 
you to be? Are you even nurtured of who he is? Because God, Jesus' identity was with man, but he was also God. So this is why sometimes the enemy can get confused. When they brought him to the cross then, Satan thought they were dealing with the Son of Man. Because the Son of Man is according to the flesh. When they crucified Jesus, Satan thought, now we have this Jesus. I thought he could live the way he wanted. I thought he could raise people from the dead. I thought he could heal other people. But what the devil didn't recognize is that when he raised Lazarus from the grave, that was just practice. When he raised Jairus' daughter, that was just practice. When he healed Peter's mother, that was just practice. And I've got news for the devil. Because I've got Jesus on my side. If he could raise Lazarus, if he could raise Jairus, then what are you concerned about? Because if he can do it before, he can do it again. And all we've got to do, in spite of our migraine, is to lift up, is to raise up, is to magnify the name of Jesus. Magnify. Somebody holler, magnify his name. And so this is where you and I have got to recognize that even though he died on a cross, it was the Son of Man that was crucified. Because you can't kill the God in us. I wish I had seven here. That's why you talk about me. And I'm still here. Because you can't kill what God has put in our spirit. You can injure my flesh. I should have brought a church with me tonight. You can hurt my feelings, but you can't hurt my anointing because my anointing is not from this earth. My anointing comes straight from God. And this is why every convocation, no matter what it looks like, I'll run to this house because your presence here is simply Simply telling the devil, you thought you destroyed me throughout the year, but here I come again. Do I have any worshipers that will look at your life and say, here I come again. I'm wounded, but I'm still going. I'm bruised, but I'm still believing because I got Jesus on my side and it's going to be all right. I feel Jesus here. Somebody will your hand. I said, I got Jesus. I got him in the morning. I got him in the evening. I got him in noonday. I got him. He's always with me. And so this is why when you understand what he's talking about, the Jesus that overcame the world, the Jesus that overcame the grave. Can we talk about Jesus? The Jesus that sacrificed his life is the same one that's healing me today that's delivering me today the same Jesus that brought my grandmother through is the same Jesus because he is I feel Jesus here he is the same yesterday today and forever if you want to make the devil mad Open your mouth and say the same thing. The same Jesus that raised, he is our God. And so because there is an identity, the devil wants you to be wrapped up in your flesh. But there's something else going on in me. The more I get hurt is the better I get. The more I'm bruised, I don't hear nobody yet. It's the higher I go, the devil is crazy. He should have learned from Pharaoh. The more Pharaoh pressed Israel is the more blessed they became. So let him press you and watch your children rise up. Let him press you and watch God begin to bring them out. Because I got 
my Jesus when I have nothing else I may not have tongues but I got Jesus I may not have victory but I got Jesus because the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run in run in to the name hang out with the name his name shall be called wonderful his name shall be called counselor his name shall be called mighty god prince of peace i got a name look at somebody tell them i don't have money but i got a name i don't have a house but i got a name the name the name somebody praise that name praise somebody how to praise praise the name that's what he did that's why hebrews brings us here he said who you gotta remember that hebrews set up the case he said first of all there are those who came before us how did they make it they made it on the name that's why hebrew says wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with a great crowd of witnesses when you get weak your forefathers are calling jesus when you get down your foremothers are calling jesus there's a great cloud of witnesses that are saying if we can make it if we endured if we survived if we made it you can make it too i wish i had worshipers i've got to get out of here somebody jump to your feet touch about three people and say if they made it what's your excuse they had no money but they made it had no finance but they made it had no houses but they made it we are compassed with a great cloud of witnesses i'm a witness is anybody a witness lift your hand and holler i'm a witness i'm a witness i've seen him do it i've seen him perform it i'm a witness because we have to lay aside every weight i feel something coming off tonight every sin every weight every complexity every migraine every circumstance at the name of jesus is got to go i feel a prophet in the house now in the name of yeshua I release your victory in the name of Yeshua. I release your inheritance because I'm a worshiper. Are you a worshiper? Somebody heard I'm a worshiper. I got to worship. Hallelujah. Can I borrow something? Brother Nathan, Bishop, come here. You see, a worshiper knows how to make it. They made a mistake when they crucified Jesus. They should have crucified him with his hands by his side. If they crucified him like this, it would be all over. But what they didn't know, that Jesus was a worshiper. And even when I'm negative, I can still bless him. Even when I'm broken, I can still bless him. They made a mistake because they raised his hands. Anytime you raise my hands, I got to worship. I got to come through. I don't know what I'm going through. Somebody raise your hands for about 30 seconds. I said, Lord, I'm wounded, but I'm a worshiper. I'm bleeding, but I'm a worshiper. I'm depressed because I'm a worshiper. Because he didn't die for me to die. He died that I might have life and I have it more abundantly. I feel Jesus here. They laid him in a tomb.
too. They raised him. But the devil is a liar. When they laid him in the grave, that's another worship position. I prostrate myself before you. When I lay out, I'm telling God, if you can't do it, it can't be done. Stretch out. Stretch out. Stretch out. Stretch out. Stretch out and live your life. Give somebody a high five. Tell them live your life. He died for you to live. He died for you to prosper. He died for you to advance. He died for you to get up. Get up and believe. I still got life. I still have life. I I still have life. Somebody heard I still? I still have life. That's why when a baby is born, don't satisfy that the baby's born, you still the midwife. Henny will tell you just because it's born doesn't mean it's alive. You need to hear a cry that there's life no matter what you're going through. God needs to hear you cry, I've got life, life. You still have life, you still have life. Prophesy down your road, tell them you still have life. You still have life, you still have life. The devil is a liar, you can't st- He's slaving, yet will I trust him? I'm a survivor, survivor, survivor. If you're a survivor, open your mouth and scream if you're a survivor. and tell them I survived it. I survived it. Don't tell them what you survived. Just declare that I survived it. You still have life. Oh, Baba Shea. Jesus gives you life. The Holy Ghost gives you life. You still have life. quit but Job got into a place where he thought he was going to die so he reminded God I don't want to die so Job said to God the grave can't praise you the grave can't lift you alive so God said in order to get praise out of you I've got to keep you alive in order to get worship out of you I've got to keep you if you've got life praise him if you've got life worship him if you've got life give him glory you've got life honey life I speak life over your children I speak life over your church I speak life over your ministry I speak live honey live pastor live choir member live somebody praise God with her she's running for her life She's running for her life. She's running for her life. She's running. Somebody put a praise on it. Somebody put a praise on it. If you've got life, somebody give him 
Jesus the praise. Give Jesus the praise. I'm out of time. The writer said about Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him, I've just come to remind you that you've, you've got something in front of you. Everything that you've been through is behind you. But God has set something in front of you and God's going to give you the life to succeed. God's going to give you the power to achieve everything that he wanted to do. By a show of hands, how many, say, how many can say you heard something in the word tonight? Did you hear from God tonight? By a show of hands, did you hear something from the Lord? Did you hear something from the Lord? I heard something from the Lord tonight. I'm going to pray one more time. This is going to be the last altar call, I believe, for this meeting. God wants me to tell you that your past and your present is where you're standing. But your future is at this altar. Your past and your present is where you're standing. But your future is at this altar. 
If you raise your hand and you said you heard something from God, I want you to meet me at this altar very quickly. Come on, young man. Come on, young woman. I want you to come. If you raise your hand and you said you heard something from the Lord, will you come? Come quickly. I'm going to pray one more time. Young man, you heard something from God. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? From all of you. Huh? God says, I'm going to give you life. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you life that you never thought that you had. Come on, prayer warriors. Come on, altar workers. Come on, young man. Come on, young woman. We're going to bless God. I saw many more. Raise your hands over there. Will you trust God? Will you trust God and come? This is the last night of the feast. Will you trust God and come? I saw hands over here. You need to come. I saw hands over here. You need to come. I saw hands over here. You need to come. I saw hands over here. You need to come. I saw more hands that are coming. If you raised your hand and said, God, I heard you tonight. I heard you tonight. I want you to come. I want you to come. Come on, believe in God. Come believe in God. Come believe in God. There's still room at the cross. Will you come? Will you come? There are those who are going to pray with you. Going to believe God for you. I said, I'm going to give you your life back. Oh, God. The Lord said, I'm going to give you your life back, your life back. Some of you think you've messed up your life. God says, I'm going to give you your life back. Come on, preachers. Let's pray with them. Your life. Come get your life. Come get your life. Come get your life. Come get your life. Oh! Come get your life. God's got something in front of you. God's got something in front of you. God's got something in front of you. shaking in the building.
Jesus. Somebody just got their life back. Somebody just got their life back. Somebody just got their life back. Oh God, I wasted it. But thank you for giving me my life back. You still have life left. Because he sacrificed his life. of the Holy Ghost. I feel the push of God. I feel the push of God. Come on, worship him in this house. Surrender all to you. Everything I to you. That's what God wants tonight. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I surrender all to you. I surrender all. Just say yes to the Lord tonight. Everything I give to you. Withholding nothing. Withholding. Come on, I need you to give it to the Lord tonight. I surrender all God, I'm done with this life. I'm done with this one. Everything I give to you. I feel heating in the room with holy nothing. With holy nothing. I surrender. Give your heart to the Lord tonight. Give your life back to the Lord. Everything I give to you with hope. Come on, worship Him now. With hope. Come on, lift your hands all over the room and let's worship. I surrender all. That's what God wants from you tonight. Everything I give to you. Withholding, withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I surrender. I surrender.
Christ Jesus is in the building. Everything I give to you with hope, Jesus and Him crucified. Jesus and Him crucified. Jesus and Him crucified. With holy nothing, with holy. That's all He wants. With holy nothing. With holy. With holy nothing. With holy. Let's go old school. Singing. Giving your life back tonight. And all to thee, my place. Lift that one more time. Everyone lift your hands all over the building. Ah, come on. Surrender. said and done. You have been so good to us. You are a mighty God. Right now, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. For the word that has come forward to change us and to strengthen us. Thank you for the blessing and the anointing on your speaker tonight. Thank you for this choir, for the musicians, for the singers, everyone that took part. We thank you, Father. Those you are filling with your precious Holy Ghost right now, Father. Help them to just hold on a little while longer. They're going to get their breakthrough. For all of you coming, thank you, Father, that you have brought us all here tonight. Thank you, Father. Words fail us, but we are grateful. And as we are about to take the road, Father, go with us, go before us, fly every trap of the enemy. Father, take everyone home safely. Free from accident, breakdowns, anything that would hinder their way. So many things for us to mention tonight. But words would fail us. So Heavenly Father, hear from our hearts that we are just grateful. And we are thankful 
Thank you for this convocation. One that will live long in the memories of everyone who attended. Father, we thank you because it's all about you. And we thank you. These mercies we pray and ask in no other name but the name of the Lord Jesus. And our glad hearts say, Amen. Somebody shout, Amen. Say, Amen again. How many of you know that God knows how to do it? God knows when to do it in his time. He is God. We have spoken about Jesus and him crucified. So we want you to go home with this, Bishop Dexter. Yeah, we want you to go home with this just after Bishop Dexter has spoken. The choir will send you home with this song. God bless you everyone as we leave tonight. Take the joy home. Take this anointing home. And remember this year, our theme for the year, not just for convocation, but our theme for this year, Jesus and him crucified. Tell someone near you, God bless you. Tell them you love them. Tell them you're praying for them. We meet. Hallelujah. On the prayer call this week, we go right back into our daily prayers. Amen. And of course you will hear, God bless you, beloved ones. I love you. I appreciate you all. As the bishop said, please be safe. Amen. Uh, announcements are coming. Keep in mind, God bless you, choir. Amen in the name of the Lord Jesus.
You remember when we used to sing that song? It went something like this. Jesus never Come on, choir. Never fails. Heaven and earth. Away. But Jesus never fails. All over the building sing. Jesus never fails. Somebody watching online, you're gonna pass away. I want you to know. benediction but there are people still being ministered to and we're going to be mindful of that as we leave this place so that they can get the same blessing that we got so heaven and earth Jesus never fails. As you're leaving the building, I want to remind you that on the 23rd, 23rd, yes, of August, we will be saying goodbye to Pastor Winter at Gibson Road. Official communications will be going out via email and via WhatsApp. But could you be mindful that on Tuesday 23rd of August, we will be saying our final goodbyes to Pastor Windsor. Everybody, heaven and earth, heaven. God bless you, and good night.